Thank you very much uh, for inviting us here again. This, of course, feels like a family environment to us, and the, the number of people that share the vision of freedom is enormous. Um, last year, we had some discussions here, and some people were thinking and were telling me that we will never be able to settle Liberland. And uh, this year, we have done it. Uh, there is now 30 people living in Liberland, so the situation has changed completely. And if you think about it from the position of the SARC, we are, let's say, 11 times smaller population physically, which I don't think is bad because we settled Liberland only on August 6th. That was a very special time when we just went to Liberland like we always do, organizing a party there, and somehow Croatians let go. They checked our passports, not arresting anybody on that occasion. And since then, we are actively developing the beautiful piece of territory. And I'm very grateful, of course, to many of you that already supported what we are doing. This picture is here because of Patrick Schumacher, who's been with us from the very beginning of Liberland. Uh, I would say one of the most prominent visions how Liberland could be developed. And uh, it's one of the, I would say, nice icons of what we could build there. Of course, the situation is a bit different. We only settled uh, a month or two months ago, so don't expect anything like that in Liberland yet. But, as we said, uh, this objective has not changed. Well, what, we, what changed a little bit is that we are seeking the best technological ways to make that happen, to reduce the bureaucracy to absolute, minim absolute minimum, to introduce the most advanced uh, governance system on the planet, but also keep the notion of having almost zero bureaucracy, and that is, I think, also 90% finished, which I feel is very exciting. What also hasn't changed that Liberland territory has not been claimed by any other sovereign country. Uh, that's very exciting. Now we've got an almost 50-page study documenting that neither Croatia nor Serbia don't claim this territory in any way. We have a small change in, in Croatia's behavior towards the jurisdiction in Liberland. Uh, interestingly enough, they are trying to enforce their jurisdiction without claiming the territory. Uh, but it's kind of a, I would say, an interesting legal situation for them because uh, we know that whenever the court actually gets to sit down and decide about these things, if there is jurisdiction inside of Liberland or not, if, if Croatia doesn't actively claim this territory, they will have a pretty hard time. So we know we're the most ideologically empowered country. Uh, we know that these principles work. We've, we've talked about it many times here. You know, Switzerland is a great example. Liechtenstein is the most prosperous country built on similar principles. Singapore, of course, you know, turned into a swamp, also into a beautiful place to live in, extremely prosperous. And the only thing you need is a rule of law and liberty of people to conduct their business. And uh, we wanted to invoke the spirit of American Revolution when we started Liberland. That's why we started it on 13th of April. That was the birthday of Thomas Jefferson. And, uh, and I think we're pretty much doing very well. It helped us very much to open the doors in the United States and open the doors, for example, with key Republican Party institutes. And I will talk a little bit more after that. So the Constitution was based on American Constitution uh, uh, initially. Uh, we added a couple elements of Swiss democracy into it, especially the public veto, so anything can be vetoed by majority of, of society, which is, I think, great. We limited the ministries just to four ministries, so Liberland government only take care of security, justice, and diplomacy, doesn't try to in, intrude into any other areas. And we also introduced the system of voluntary taxes, which I think is very important, I would say innovation, because what we are doing, we are removing the violence from the state. We have done a very similar thing to our justice system as well, with our system of merits being both positive as well as negative way to, to assess how people are helpful or dishelpful to the society. Uh, so, you know, we can actually uh, get somebody and, and sue him inside of Liberland without putting him in jail. He simply loses the merits. If they pay taxes or are helpful in any other way, they gain merits, and the merits are substantially the shares of the sovereignty of Liberland. And the blockchain project itself has been in development for more than two years now. I'm quite proud that we are, I would say, 95% finished. We have managed to move the whole constitution, election system, budgeting, system of registries of properties, as well as registries of land, 
uh, including the justice system, which was very exciting work, which was conducted mostly by Michal Ptáčník, our Minister of Justice, who is also here with us. Um, so that has all been put onto blockchain, which I believe is a, is a thing that will really help us in the next phase of development, because it will, first of all, allow anybody to copy this, uh, this open source, and secondly, it will really allow people to join this society and knowing that it's completely transparent. We will be the first country ever that has online accounting of everything that it does and every vote that it does, which I think will bring an enormous amount of interest from the people that are both in crypto world but also in the liberty movement. Yeah, elections in Liberland, into Liberland Congress are every three months, but not just that. You can decide to remove your support for your congressman any second that you want. So you, you are polit pooling, we call it polit pooling your merits into the support of some congressman. But if you no longer like what he does, you can take your votes and vote directly with your shares, which I think is also quite important to have better accountability. Um, Everything is online, everything, by the way, we already had first elections, kind of a test elections, but the whole system already works. Uh, we are just working on setting up the date for the real elections, but technically we are ready for it. I've already talked about public veto. I think it's a great way to ensure that the, the, the corporation basically that runs Liberland doesn't go against the will of majority of society. I believe it's a very helpful tool. The public veto can, it's not just about removing any law, it's also removing a, a, any person, including the position of president, can be removed by public veto in Liberland. And I think, again, it's a good way to make sure that the corporation that runs Liberland is reined in and doesn't go against the interest of majority of society. While we also make sure that majority of society cannot dictate some rules to minority of society, which we know is one of the biggest problems in the societies we are living today. The judici judiciary system has been inspired by ULEX. It's also completely now on our blockchain. It is a system in which two parties select their judges, and if they don't agree on the same judge, these two judges select a third judge. It will create a market, open market for judges. I'm quite excited that people from Dubai International Financial District or people from Hague that are already arbiters are interested in joining. We even have a constitutional a judge from India as well as constitutional uh, judge from Georgia that are interested in being part of this newly created uh, system of, of ju judiciary that we are building. So I think it's quite an uh, interesting thing that you can also get engaged with if you're interested in dispute resolution mechanism and I think it will make sure that Liberland becomes one of those jurisdictions where you will really get your court case resolved within a num number of weeks and you will get a very reasonable result, unlike in many other countries. I mean, the waiting time in Croatia for dispute resolution can be up to three to four years. It's crazy how some of the jurisdictions take uh, time. Um, okay. Diplomatic presence and humanitarian presence. We have cut a lot of different deals already with a number of sovereign states across the world. Uh, we, for example, the first country to recognize Liberland through the... Uh, agreement was uh, Somaliland, we cut the deal with Haiti. Uh, we have uh, very good relations now in Dominican Republic, on El Salvador. Uh, in all of these countries, we have a humanitarian presence. Uh, we very recently opened a quite nice embassy in Washington, D.C. If you're down, please visit us as well. Uh, we are working both in European Parliament as well as with the Congress and Senate in the United States, where I was again present uh, last week and I was lobbying intensively a number of congressmen to support us, especially from the Foreign Committee. We're working in El Salvador. I just met somebody who met me on my trip, uh, and I was invited officially by the President of Salvador for the launch of Bitcoin City. That was a very exciting trip. This was the meeting with the Minister of Economy. I got awarded for the bunch of humanitarian activities we did globally at the UN level already, and the last week I had a very intensive tour around the world. Uh, we, I was sitting with one of the members of the Foreign Committee from the, from the uh, Republican Party. We met Newt the Gingrich. Uh, we also awarded uh, the lady that runs ALEC, the highest state award of Liberland. So we, we made a very strong ties. By the way, this is our team here. This is our Foreign Minister. This is our Minister of Finance. This is our Vice President. Uh, this is our representative to Bahamas. 
and this is the leadership of Alec, uh, which is, I would say, one of the most influential Republican institutions. So that was seven days ago. Then five days ago, I was in Georgia uh, talking with a number of political parties as well as also members of the Foreign Committee at the Parliament. Uh, then three days ago, I was in India. We opened the International Chamber of Media and Entertainment uh, Industry with, with the great support of a bunch of diplomatic people around the world um, that came down uh, to, to support it. By the way, this is also our team. Uh, this is our press secretary, but also representative to Georgia, Samuela Arthur, our representative in UAE. I will be there next week. So come, come and join us. We've got a very nice embassy there, our representative for India. And this gentleman, he's, he said he's more awarded than Modi. So he is a very good contact for us uh, for diplomatic outreach in India. So those were just six days. I cannot imagine how many other diplomatic trips I did last couple of months. Uh, and this is a very exciting project. I always forgot to add it to our presentation, but since we're going now to Dubai, we're also building a, where we have tested for seven months, actively tested seasteading as one of the side projects to Liberland. So this is a seastead under Liberland flag that is planning to be moved into international waters, but this is not just about it. It was just a test, technical test, what can be done and how people can live on such barges. Uh, we're planning to buy two times bigger, the biggest barges that you can get, put them in the grid and place them in Indian Ocean. Uh, so that's one of the side projects to Liberland as well. You know, everybody talks about seasteading. We're actually actively doing it. If you want to visit with me next week, I will be in Dubai. We'll, we'll be able to, to visit it. And it's already in international waters right now. But we want to have a, a better and safer place for it in the future. Anyway, the whole Liberland is also built in metaverse. That's kind of exciting. If you go to liberverse.net, you can, you can run through Liberland. Uh, we have a small problem now. Our lead developer has actually decided to move to Liberland, so he's no longer actively involved with the development of the virtual metaverse. He is actually the mayor of Liberland right now, um, Mirek Kaspar, and I hope he will join us on Zoom in a couple of minutes. Initially, we decided to encircle Liberland uh, with different uh, villages, and that's why we have built uh, Liberland Ark Village. If you're coming down to visit Liberland, also stop by in Serbia in the Ark Village. It's a very nice project, and that's where we started to have active settlement effort from. Uh, and it was successful uh, since, since 6th of August. We are actually actively settling Liberland. People are started to claim their plots. It's a big territory. It's seven square kilometers, so it's not that uh, easy to settle. But people have started to do that. Now there is around 30 people living in Liberland. Uh, we have a plan to restore the, the house that was destroyed in 2018. Uh, we already have a nice fleet of ships there. Um, and we started to build. This is how we started to build uh, months and a half ago. It was a lot of fun. We were expecting that it will not be left unnoticed by Croatia. So we didn't put any isolation or any water systems there. And we were right. You know, the Croatians came without any paperwork and scrapped our construction. Uh, but for us, it was a basically great gift because the whole Croatia got to know, all the media has written about the existence of Liberland, and of course, they were not very nice uh, about Croatian police activities and the forest activities, uh, which were not super friendly, but okay. Uh, it was a great publicity for us, and I hope it's not going to happen again. But even if it did, it's always more publicity value for us than, than the actual damage we are planning now to start constructing a kids park in the center of Liberland. Uh, I'm working with one of the biggest um, uh, amusement parks here in Czech Republic. Uh, maybe you know Miraculum, if you have kids, visit it. They have uh, started working with us on the project for that particular part. This is the settlement now on the Liberty Beach, uh, where I hope we'll be able to, to jump quickly in. This is the project for the Liberland Hotel. It's a 10 million Euro uh, project, which I hope we will also be able to start very soon. Uh, so that's another cool project. I'm going to go quickly through it. We have broken ice in Croatia. Uh, the, the closest football team has uh, been uh, playing under Liberland Flex, which was very exciting, but created a lot of controversy among Croatians. But it was a, a big, big opener for, for diplomacy with the local community. And I would love to see you in Liberland at some point, of course. Uh, it, it is a beautiful piece of land. 
amazing beaches, amazing people there, and very easy to become a citizen or resident. Uh, so it is, I would say, the cheapest citizenship that you get in the world. We had to double the price because the interest after settlement was too heavy. Uh, because we would basically sell out all the shares at that, at that rate. So right now it's uh, two times more expensive than it was one month ago, but still very affordable. It's a $10,000 uh, citizenship by investment program. And uh, yeah, that's it from me. You know, you can see how, what kind of paperwork we are dealing with, with now on the daily basis. You can meet Tanka that is, that is managing our new citizens and e-residents. And uh, I'm not sure if we are ready for the Zoom connection, is it ready? Almost there? Okay, yeah, okay, it's getting dark. Okay, well, okay, we, I think we missed we miss the sunlight. But we've got Veronica, Veronica, are you there? And we are connected via Starlink, so I hope that the connection is okay. Hello, Veronica. Okay. That's directly on the beach. And by the way, the Liberty Yacht House, the one that you saw, is coming down uh, from Batina. But I don't think we can hear you, Veronica, too bad. Doesn't matter. You know, let's, let's skip to the question parts, if there are any questions, and maybe Veronica will be able to join us. Hello. Uh, on the aerial photo in the very beginning, it looked like there was some forestry and pathways and everything. So who built those or who made that? <laughs> well, historically, all these roads, uh, like historically, historically, and we have a really nice article about the history of the territory. So uh, it was basically owned by Habsburgs. Then it went into the management of, of under Serbia. Then it went into Serbian forests and then legally it was completely abandoned by Serbia as well as erased everything from the cadastre map. So if you're asking about ownership, it's really cool. There is nobody else than Liberland claiming this territory on the ownership level. And these, all these roads were actually built back in these days. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward in the new brochure, by the way, that is coming up probably in, in two weeks from now. There will be complete history of the territory step by step. How did it come to this? But also historically back a couple of centuries to explain uh, who were the people, for example, that built the hunting lodge that I showed you how we want to restore it. And who were the people that, uh, that built the roads there back days? And, and who are the people that... And there is also a 11th century church buried under Liberland as well as 11th century village. So we started archaeological works on that. I hope we will get some more... Uh, some more answers because the last round of archaeological exploration on the territory of Liberland was done by Hungarians in 1900. So we're, we're also in the process of getting to know our territory now when we are physically there. Uh, we can do all the archaeological archaeologic research that we need. All right. Uh, out of the two bordering countries that you have, which one are you more afraid of? And on a one to ten, what do you think the odds are of them saying, hey, you can't exist anymore? Well, you know, they can say whatever they want. We exist. It's very difficult to get rid of us. We are a nation of 730,000 people that are extremely positive about what we are doing. We are literally trying to build a new generation of nation states governance, and we are very successful at, at it. And, uh, you know, and I'm just happy that so far Croatia has been acting like a mentor to us. If we have grown too fast, they a little bit slap us over the fingers. But I really feel like they're guiding us. Rather than, uh, rather than fighting with us at this stage. And I'm very grateful to them. You know, this whole situation was basically created out of the fact that I had a positive meeting with the president of Croatia in June this year, and I understood that there is a space now for the co-living of our two nations and that Croatia simply doesn't have a uh, plan to occupy us, but we are in this stage when we will be kind of mentored. All right, I think we might have Veronica back. Uh, can we hear her? She's walking us through the Liberty Island. And Veronica, is Jagdhaus passing by or not? Is it landing anywhere close? Veronica, can you hear me? If you can hear me, turn the, the light off and on. There we go. 
Uh -huh. So she can probably cannot hear me, but I, we see that she's talking. Ah, all that happens when you try to do the Zoom on the conference. But anyway, uh, we're building now domes in the center of, of, of Liberty Island. We're also building yurtas. Uh, we want to have a decent housing for some 30 people by the end of next week. Uh, it's going to be quite a, quite a, a, a construction effort. So thank you again. It was a great pleasure being here. I hope uh, I will get to meet much, many more of you during the dinner and tomorrow. And uh, where Liberland is open for business, not just companies, but also physical settlements. So I think it's quite exciting.